Sometimes a small blessing can come in the form of an umbrella. In 2008, I had the great good fortune to travel to Japan. It was a serendipitous happening. I'd had an unexpected gift of an airfare. My dad had passed away the previous year and had always expressed a wish to return to the Japan of his youth. But life in New Zealand, mortgage, kids, etc. meant he never made it. So I decided to take him with me, in my pocket. We'd always had a quiet Japanese presence in our rural New Zealand home. Eggshell china tea sets, geisha dolls, etc. The result of Dad's tour to Japan as part of the combined Australian-New Zealand repatriation troops called J-Force. He was a 19-year-old country kid with no particular skill set who joined the New Zealand military force in 1947 to help out after the bombing of Nagasaki. He was stationed at Shimonoseki and celebrated his 21st birthday there. As you might imagine, the experience changed him profoundly. Dad developed a lifelong love and respect for the Japanese people, the beauty, elegance, manner and custom of their culture, and particularly their grace and dignity in the face of the horror they'd experienced. He formed a lifelong abhorrence of conflict and war. Somehow this passed into me. I took some of his ashes back to Nagasaki and planned to sprinkle them in gardens surrounding Tokorowai Rangimari, a gift of solidarity and friendship in the form of a monument from the people of New Zealand to the people of Japan. It's an impressive stainless steel cloak of peace and I knew Dad would rest well there in the Nagasaki Peace Park. On the last day of my trip, my plans were nearly derailed by extraordinary monsoonal rains. Had it not been for the grace and generosity of a boy on the tram, I may never have completed my tribute. Beauty, elegance, manner and custom, still on display after all these years, I saw what Dad had meant. I wrote a poem that night. Nagasaki. The boy on the tram was kind, his eyes full of concern as he gazed at the rain-drenched foreigner. He offered his umbrella as she began to disembark. She politely refused. He politely insisted. She was gracious in her acceptance. The lilies in her hand the result of an awkward exchange the previous night mounting disquiet on the face of the florist that the foreigner was making a regrettable choice. Prayer hands up, some pseudo-Catholic crossing, some pointing at the sky, Papa, heaven, seemed to bridge the cultural impasse. So here she is, ashes in hand, 5,000 miles from his home, bringing him to this chosen place of rest. Not exactly home for him, more a coming-of-age place, a can't-shake-it-off-for-the-rest-of-your-life place. An impressionable young man in a devastated land, a land searching for consolation after the horror of war.